Lyme Regis is a little beach town in southwest England known for its tourism and fossils. Mary Anning, a renowned fossil hunter, also researched prehistoric life and found fossils along the coasts. This documentary is a brief look into fossils and those who hunt for them, as well as the ways the fossil industry keeps Lyme Regis afloat. First, let's meet our speakers. Uh, my name is Brendan Perkins. I am a geology major, um, and I'm on this trip uh, to learn all about that. Hey, so I am Julia Reisner, and I teach uh, paleontology and geology at Northern Kentucky University. My name is Barry Titchener. I'm actually on Bell Cliff, but I call myself Gun Cliff Fossils. Mr. Titchener speaks about the importance of the fossil industry to Lyme Regis. It's very important. I don't think Lyme would exist without the fossils. A lot of people come to look for fossils, so they've got to stay here. And it's the best place in Britain to find fossils on this cliff. We're fortunate that the beach is below the seabed, so they drop out of the cliff onto the beach. Yeah, Taiwan, you know, they all come in. Yeah, anywhere in the world, really. He also speaks about the future of the fossil industry. There's less and less coming out. There's been quite a few new falls, but we haven't had really stormy weather to wash it out yet. So that'll come out in the winter. So the cliff will continually erode, and the fossil belt goes from here right up to Yorkshire. So as long as they don't put a seawall in front of it, it will keep eroding. So there's an endless supply, basically. Julie and Brandon give us some insight on the types of fossils in the area. So we are in Jurassic and early Cretaceous age rocks, so that means we're from the time of the dinosaurs, but these rocks are marine. So this was sediment that was laid down during a, uh, when this was covered by an ocean, about 200 to 180 or so million years ago. So we have um, a lot of marine invertebrates, like this huge ammonite here, big beautiful ammonite, has seen some uh, traces of a few more as well. And these were the main, main prey items and food source for the uh, ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs that Mary Anning discovered here in the early 1800s as well. So we're finding some marine invertebrates that also thrive in those seas. So around here, there's lots of um, like ammonites, and uh, which are, you know, small shelled um, squid-like creatures. There's, I mean, lo lo lots of things that you'd find in the ocean. Uh, maybe not necessarily things that are around today, but stuff like um, plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, um, very large marine reptiles. Um, those are, you know, a bit rare, but they, they, they would be found here. Um, and, and there is also stuff that you would find in the ocean today. So, you know, in your typical seashells, your mollusks and things like that. Brandon and Mr. Titchener, how did your passion for fossils start? Well, that's an interesting question because I, it's really something I've liked ever since I was a kid. I, I, I don't know exactly what sparked it, but I, I guess it's, it's one of those things where when you're a kid, you, 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 you pick up some interest, you know, it's, it'll be trains or, or dinosaurs or um, cars or something like this. And um, I just never grew up, I guess. Uh, I, I just stayed that way. And I don't know, I just think they're really interesting. I think you can learn a lot just by picking up a rock and looking at it. And I think that's really neat. I used to go to Weymouth on holiday because I used to live near Oxford. Mm -hmm. And I used to find fool's gold, but I forgot the fool's part. <laughs> so I thought, gold! <laughs> and since then, ever since then, I've been interested in fossils. Well, I, I think it's interesting that um, you can you can pick up a rock and you can see a fossil in it. And what you're what you're looking at really is, is a, an animal that has been dead for many, many millions of years. Um, and you're looking at something that perhaps no one else ever has seen um, that has been there for an extraordinary amount of time and so it, it's interesting that you can hold a piece of history it, it, an individual's history in your hands um, so I, I think that's very neat I would love to find teeth of a plesiosaur or an ichthyosaur like because um, these animals are so huge they're so immense and, that, and they're they're rare to find the, any kind of full body or even a body part but if you, if you can find the teeth that's uh, I think it'd be very neat. I just want to find an ammonite, <laughs> but it is um, a little tougher this time of year. Uh, we have a lot of weathering of the uh, marine of the sea cliffs that happen in the winter time. Uh, so that really allows. Uh, it, it means that winter time is one of the best places to uh, best times. I'm sorry to uh, locate fossils here. Uh, in the summer, it's not quite as good because we don't have as much, much extensive weathering, but it is also a lot safer because.
because we don't have as many landslides of the cliff. So I don't know. I'm just hoping to find maybe a little ammonite or so, but um, it's uh, slim picking so far. Brandon describes what to look for when hunting for fossils. Yeah, generally. I mean, when I go like to an area, I'll have some idea of what things I want to find. And um, I'll, sometimes I'll have, I don't have them with me now, but sometimes I'll have little books that'll have information about what fossils you can find and they'll have pictures of them. And um, you, you can very easily find stuff that way just by, you know, again, just using your eyes. And so, you know, for example, here where I'm looking for ammonites and, and teeth, um, you know, if I'm looking for teeth, I'll be looking for a, sh you know, a sharp cylindrical object. Um, and you just hope for the best. So uh, with fossils, it is, uh, I think we have the idea from maybe watching Jurassic Park that you sit in one area and dig, and you don't. So you scan a wide area, you look for a little piece of bone, a little piece of shell, and then you start to focus, hone in on one area. So it's more about covering a big spot, using your eyes, starting to learn what fossil shell and bone looks like, which takes some practice. Um, and then starting to kind of get more detail. But yeah, definitely sitting in one spot and kind of digging is uh, just going to drive you nuts. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, it does take a lot of experience. I've never been particularly good at it myself, um, but uh, it is a lot of fun when you find something. Brandon tells us about the type of rocks in the area. Well, I believe the things around here are mostly shale, um, which is why you have this like dark color which would be a sedimentary rock that's made up of, of clay minerals um, that usually you find at the bottom of, that forms, I should say, on the bottom of an ocean. Um, and uh, will be in a low energy um, environment. There's not much oxygen and it, it will create these very fine sediments uh, to make this very nice uh, shale that preserves fossils very easily. The rocks change color. You see the brown ones. Mm -hmm. It's called oolite. So from West Bay up to Sherborne, you get the creamy ones. In Yorkshire, you get the black ones. You see the black ones? Mm -hmm. Same age as the lime ones. Oh. You get plesiosaur bone from the seabed off of Portland. It makes this all vertebrae there from Portland. But they've just had a ban because they were wrecking the seabed. So they're not allowed to do it anymore. And finally, Brandon tells us a cool fossil fact. I guess one that's relevant to here, and it may also tie in with history, um, the ammonites that you find here, they're, they're coiled shell-like fossils. Um, and, well, they are shells. They're shells of a squid-like creature. And when they were first discovered, even before um, you know, Mary Anning found some of the other fossils here, even way back in the past, they actually thought that they were uh, snakes that had, had died and, and frozen in time. Um, they didn't quite understand what they were, but they thought maybe they'd been cursed by, um, you know, a god or Satan or something like this, uh, and had been frozen in stone. 